Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Sergeant. Dresden and Coventry link up. <laughs> Hi, from Dresden, from Centralwerk. Nice to meet you again. Yeah, I mean, how many years ago? 2019. <laughs> the last time we met. Yeah. We're looking how well. is it in in uh, in Coventry? You're at the moment in your Herbert, yes. the Herbert so Gallery. We are in the Herbert Gallery space here. Um, in 2011, I filmed a piece called Bombed a Moonlight Sonata One, and uh, it was about the bombing of Coventry. <clears throat> um, but after that was finished, <clears throat> I really wanted to explore the story from the other point of view, uh, from the German and Dresden point of view. And uh, <clears throat> with, with Bombed One, we had... Um, uh, a, a, a lady called um, Joan Edkins, <coughs> who had witnessed the <coughs> excuse me, Froggy, uh, who had witnessed the, the the Blitz in Coventry, and had a wonderful uh, testimony from her, an oral testimony, and I incorporated that within the music score of the the performance work, the authentic oral histories. So it took another nine years before I got over to, um, uh, well, not nine years, but it was 2016 by the time I got over to Dresden to do some research. And that's when I met yourself, your good self, and John Kirsten, uh, an artist called John Kirsten, who hosted. And, and we spent uh, a various uh, place that possibly Bond 2 could be... Um, performed and you introduced me to central work which were at that point it was it was an ex munitions factory a bomb making factory um which was under construction you you guys were redeveloping that as a as a center for artist residencies uh, accommodation but then you took me into a, a building which was an old theater building where propaganda movies were shown and as soon as I walked into this place, I thought, you know, it's it's a coincidence that the theme, the second part of it should actually, you know, there was a possibility of performing it in an ex-munitions place which showed propaganda movies. And, and you know, it's just really, really amazing opportunity. Um, and following that research, also we wanted to connect with dancers and you had some background in dance and film, and so it was the perfect match, really. Um, so after that, when I got back to Birmingham, it, it, it was really difficult to try and get funding to to go over and produce the piece. Um, the Arts Council had a lot of funds to go and research, but not to actually take a piece over. But uh, when Britt Magden, uh, who was organizing the, uh, festival uh send europa um in 2017 18 she contacted me and asked if we could perform it and we finally went over in 2019 and performed the piece uh, which was an absolute you know amazing experience um so behind me you'll see time <laughs> condensed on the left is um, a piece of uh, an, an action painting, which was the result of pa uh, doing that dance battle with paint in, in a box. And that was the ceiling from there. And then on this side is the same thing, but from the dress. And it, it sat in John Hurston's studio for 14 months <laughs> before I managed to get more Arts Council funding to ship the the thing over and um, and this all happened post brexit as well which had it been a year or so earlier we could have done this with no problems and then it was so much pro protocol to bring it over and uh you know it, let's it really... let's go back sir and let's go back back <laughs> okay how comes that you you are an architect mm. and um how comes that you uh, started to to work with this 
um, different um, art forms like visual arts and dance and martial arts and yeah. how yeah how can how came this and how came the idea for the project from okay, your surrounding so you live in the UK you know we are talking now for a couple of minutes and we yes. haven't talked about the fact that you are in Great Britain you're grown up in Great Britain and um, we are uh, here in Dresden and um, I'm also from another part of Europe and we meet up and we are we share the interest for history and I want to and mm. deal with that in long-term projects and and today yeah about yours, right okay so so it began um, way back when I was about 16 17 I was really interested in how um, different art forms combined um, dance uh, through to painting and then by the time I was seven I was going into architecture and I thought well how would that relate to dance um, and going further back uh, my father Punjabi writer and poet and again used to incorporate lots of things about hearing and seeing in his written work so I think I've just got that DNA bug from him and uh, he worked with Uh, illustrators for his books um, and, but although he was based in a place called Jalandhar in, in India his writings were about international politics and I've only recently started to translate them with my, with my mother and we're going through each of those stories and, and I'm finding where the roots of my thinking are you know um, so I, I carried on with that dance notion because I loved But how did it poetry, how did it relate to architecture? So when I actually went to architecture school in Bristol, I first thing I did was join the Dance Society. And for three years, I was exploring how the two might connect, um, designing a, for example, a major project, theater for dance, a contemporary theater, where you could enter from the top, from below, sides to create a performance. And the audience could be scattered around so it's a huge uh, a theater for contemporary dance but also a community center because I have this affinity with people from all levels children to adults and so this this building would be a hub where interacted but the idea of performance left one dimension and became a three-dimensional thing a bit like a building three-dimensional and uh, And then dance was three-dimensional, so they're all related. But while I was at university, um, they asked us to look at a period in time across the board from, uh, from fashion through to design of items through to architecture. And I, I love the, the thinking behind the Bauhaus and the roots with Kandinsky and uh, all, all the the teachers that were there. I know modernism gets gets a, a hard hit sometimes um, and postmodernism sort of got a bit more looser about ideas. Um, and modernism, this idea that things are connected, that's that's where sort of hit off. Uh, the, uh, trying to create a total piece, a total work uh, using all these components. Um, Mm -hmm. It even goes further back to the seven um, this connection. Uh, oops, we have connection issues, connections. Um, so, yeah, I, I was very influenced by the Bauhaus in uh, thinking of connecting uh, art forms and designed places. And also, you're talking about long term projects. So, You know, I don't have a, a short time span on projects. Um, this has taken 12 years to get to what I feel is a conclusive milestone. And it, I suppose it is a bit like building a, a building. You know, you start off with a little sketch, maybe on an envelope, but the concept is big. And then you wait until the foundations are done and the rest is done. And the whole three dimension of it, I can sit here now thinking, yeah, actually, Every, all the little components you, you put into it have started to manifest and it's become as 
a tangible uh, space now. But incorporated in this was a live performance we did last night. Um, mm -hmm. If I can spin this around a little bit, um, you might be able to see a structure there. Mm -hmm. So that is a, a little corral that I built. If you re recall, the, the last two performances were done with physically throwing paint, using a body's energy to be violent, but to create something beautiful out, out of the violence or purportedly beautiful because behind it was a lot of violent flinging of paint maybe we should show uh a little bit of uh your work and uh, and yeah. how that you came up started dealing with the topic of conflict which is also the the main um uh, yeah uh, thread of your actual exhibition at this very moment. Yes, yeah, so what we could do, we play um, the piece we did Bomb 2 in Dresden um, and you did the filming for us on, on that because one of with what happened basically in Bomb 1 I had four characters that entered the, the stage and we did, did dance and a painting performance but but each time I do another presentation, I try and uh, see how I can expand the work. So by the time we got to Dresden, we I wanted to work with people from Dresden. So we had three amazing dancers that you helped to recruit. Um, and uh, Cindy, Cindy and Alex um, and Yoto. Um, Rika. Yotsumoto. Yotsumoto. Um, and uh, Cindy uh, Hammer. Uh, Hammer and uh, Alex. Uh, he's got that. Alex Kellogg's. Miller. Kellogg's. <laughs> Miller. Yeah. yeah, amazing dancer. But I was very particular in who I select as components in, in a piece of work. As you recall, we had. You know, there was a Taekwondo uh, expert and there was a, another dancer who did lots of contemporary dance, contact work. But he didn't, for me, he didn't have that edge of aggression. And I needed someone who had some martial arts uh, training, but were essentially dancers as well. And that could perform and improvise immediately, you know, the click of a, of a, of a button. And uh, so... I was very careful in selecting the right dancers. And actually, when we all six of us came together, the synergy was amazing, as you'll see in, in this video piece we will show. And uh, also, Barbara, your role was not to be uh, sitting back and filming the whole thing, be in the action. So much more like a documentary photographer would document a war. And although we had a very loose, loose choreographic structure the idea was a lot of it happen spontaneously mm -hmm. with your gut rather than with your head as can possible you... which would happen in a battle so if yeah can you tell if me you... a little bit i think i think i don't know if we can show the the video at the very moment but i still have a, a question for you um yeah what i mean um dealing with conflict what's the what's the why, why dance? What's the potential of dealing with conflict and, uh, in using so, dance? So, okay, I've, I've belonged to an underground uh, dance scene in UK going back to 1970s. And it's a jazz fusion, uh, I would say, a medley of uh, music forms. Um, and uh, predominantly black community um i just fell in love with the whole use of dance in so many different ways and what i found that in the clubs we were dancing people had a background in martial arts uh, 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 other forms maybe contemporary dance uh, jazz dance and there was a club in birmingham called the rum runner and in 1978 79 when i arrived there i just saw these amazing creative people uh, who were putting innovative dance music and moves together in in a strange little club setting so for me rather than being on stage 
the club became our performance space and in the club it was like an endurance test basically some of the dance sessions would start you know nine o'clock finish at two or sometimes even go until seven o'clock in the morning and it was just one person competing against another person saying i got a better move than you or, or i can dance longer than you but it was all training and a fusion of uh, what we call battling i suppose but it was done in in a sort of false aggression it, it was saying i'm going to, but let's see what your response is and they would come up with their response and you were choreographing as you amazing uh, uh learning space and i say learning space because a lot, a lot of the hand longer as opposed to go to a dance school this was done in a club and it was very, very separate from the social dance because being training and show within the context of an evening but around us would be people who are coming for a drink socializing having a little bit of a bop um so there's there's little levels going on and for the dancers uh, in those times um if you were asian or black uh, it was very difficult to get into the mainstream clubs especially on a saturday or a friday you were barred from them basically and so we were young kids teenagers with this aggression just wanting to to be normal but not being let into those spaces so you'd find your own little dance club and you'd really uh, you know sort of externalize that that energy um and some of the training was there so you could be fit enough strong enough to maybe you know if you were attacked and, and the national front were very big at that time so every time you stepped out your door every time you stepped out your door you, you're looking around as, as if there's a threat around the corner and you live with that for, for years and years and years um and uh, so you had to be fit enough to either run like the clappers or stand your ground um so so these were were training things and in my head it it felt like we were going back uh, this is not new if you go back to chinese culture or indian culture uh shaolin culture where dance forms art forms become you know martial art forms so a movement like this might be all soft uh you know you do tai chi and you do this but in just translating the energy this could be like holding someone's head and twisting it and pulling it you know so one is a, a dance move and one is a, a quite a uh, an ag aggressive attack or defense thing so these links with dance art and martial art uh and i say art with a big a because these are disciplined movements that you have to do again and again and again uh, maybe over a lifetime to 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 perfect and they have a grace about them but they have a, also a dangerous capacity um so dance form for those who are really entrenched in in the training has hidden within it the capacity to be a martial art so so that language spoke to me and and it's become one of the components uh, in uh, the bombed series um and it just developed from that really um yeah so that and also in the punjabi or sikh culture um obviously sikh culture developed as a as a warrior culture but also it was a place where you didn't take sides basically but you know the warrior position was to see who the oppressor and who the underdog was and who the tyrant was and, and make a judgment you know who to protect and who not to protect so and sometimes those roles change you know the tyrant becomes the underdog and in in time everything just unfolds in different ways um so i wanted to always see different sides of 
any conflict um, the story is wider than than we start to have in our own communities in our own tribes we, we're doing it like this mm -hmm. um, but to open those spaces up I think this is what the work is actually saying what is conflict you know <clears throat> how do we address it because it's the same everywhere it's the same exactly the same it's based on feudalism tribalism and i don't know just i don't know is it sickness you know do we need it in 2022 are we still battling over land and things so these are the questions i would like this work to to raise beyond beyond the the those those issues of um you know art forms uh, there is yeah. a scene in in in, uh, in the performance you did in Zentralwerk after the 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 dancing the strong dancing the intense and the, the sweating and and uh, finally the dancer stand there in poses mm -hmm. yeah they seem like still monuments but they are still pulsing because the the breath yeah. is there and can you can you talk about a little bit what What's the scene? What yeah, the, the performance sequence uh, in in strategy was that two sides would meet and they would uh, dance battle, uh, but they were dressed in combat gear, um, and so the the threat is real, but the actual performance is dance. Um, then they would enter into a box. And within the box, uh, the battle would continue, but this time with projectiles. And the projectiles are paint. And we had a series of flags that go in there, and the paint gets onto the flags. And then after that, that battle within the box is over, the characters come out, and they've got these flags sodden with the paint in different colors. And they weave around each other as if they're victorious and they hang the flags up and then they walk on to plinths now the idea before was that when they came out of the box they would do a victory dance apparently victory dances were were very commonplace in 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 britain after the war uh, the streets would line up with tables they would put you know do a little party out in the street and they would have a dance uh, you pay your two pens whatever and join in with the dance um and, and again dance comes into this whole thing of uh, social cohesion um so the idea was that the four or six of us would come out of this box do our funny dance and then would stand up on these plinths as if like yes look i've won i've won you know i'm the leader i've won actually what happens is <laughs> it's quite sad it's what i got the vibe was it's very very somber and sad and and you come out get onto the plinths as you say after a battle you're just expended and exhausted and um it's quite melancholy so it changed from what I initially wanted was this yeah we've won here i am on the plinth the statue you know we've, we've in the past we always celebrated uh victory with a sculpture and a statue of victor you know mm -hmm. high up on the plinth. we we can show a little bit of of the piece um from 2011 which is a very is showing very intensively what the scene that you were you you presented before
then the bomb started to pop and it was horrendous and my vow was actually a bloody sexy bomb. Yeah, so that was back in 2011. Um, when I was creating the music for this, I mean, technology is, a, is an amazing thing. Uh, you know, I, I sort of go in various directions with technology, but creating music um, is has made it simpler. Rather than having a 10 piece band, you can actually use um, components already set up and overlay them and, and again build a musical composition but the fine the finer tuning you know with the keyboard and the, the, the trying to get those melodies which rip into you and that was really exciting too um so there's a lot of playing as on top of these structured composed uh beats behind the back the back of the music um uh, the music in this particular piece also references uh the club dance music so a dan dancer from my space entering this space in the art gallery seeing paintings and and art, 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 art items and seeing the dance will definitely understand uh, and engage with this this museum uh, piece so i have invited a lot of those characters to the exhibition and they will be uh, turning up um mm -hmm. yes yeah, so yeah are, are we able to show the uh, a little part of the performance in dresden now which is um, a question yeah. to so just, just before we go okay. that, yeah well yeah just before we go that, I'll, the first piece uh, was involved this dialogue uh, oral history with John, uh, Joan Edkins and strategically placing voice against the music to emphasize that an emotional uh, high and low. It was really, really the task of that piece. When I got to Dresden um, and having an audience with Hannah Kirsten, uh, John Kirsten's mother, it was just fantastic. So I got a piece, uh, an interview, uh, an interview with her, and at one point, Jean was in, trying to interpret it, interpret what she was saying in German into English, and uh, and I said, well, don't worry about that. I just want to have the gaze concentrate, and I wanted her to just tell her story in German, and then I I could deal with the transition later, and because that communication is completely different different than if I tried to set up this dialogue of translating, it would have not put out the same uh, spontaneity and memories. And so I think she just was very gracious in what she said about her experience of the war. And, um, and, uh, the, and so it, then the 20 minute performance we did here, I expanded that into a 40 minute performance mm -hmm. uh, and incorporated uh, Hannah Kirsten's voice in there as well. So yeah, we can we can have a look at that now. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're not quite ready. What I'll say is- um, I, I, I have a question. Um, I mean, this, the dealing with the, the war of the second world war topic, mm. um, it came in at some point in your in your life or at, uh, before 2011. Um, how, why? Well, I mean, okay, of course, you're interested in conflict, but uh, there are very many kinds yeah. of conflicts, and you decided yeah. to work on that. Well, in, in 2009, I uh, wanted to explore, uh, again, how you could create a piece of art through 
painting. I wanted to take painting off the canvas. I knew J Jackson Pollock had a, a style of paint, dripping paint rhythmically and creating a canvas, but it's essentially a painting. And I always wanted to bring that into a three-dimensional space uh, through movement and dance and using the total body uh, as, as, an, as an instrument. So what I did, basically, I created a four and a half meter cube and I, and I placed CCTV on the corners and I did a probably a 45 minute dance in this huge cube and created a three dimensional painting. And I really uh, went went into it quite aggressively, smashing the walls, you know, and stomping and using sound as a rhythmic thing. Um, and then that piece was uh, entitled Capture. And I was also reflecting on things that were happening with terrorism, with Guantanamo Bay. Um, so it was, th that was the context I, I looked at Capture. Following that, um, an opportunity came with uh, uh, in Coventry to explore uh, with a very small grant to explore some materials uh, on on a project uh, as, as a sort of research. And I got onto that project, and we had a little unit in a shop in the shopping centre in the middle of Coventry. But uh, a week into the project, I, I went to. Um, the the organization said um i've already tested a prototype which is quite a big construction and i would like to explore the the theme of this residency which was the bombing coventry i'd like to explore it as a bigger performance can we go and look for some spaces and uh, within about three months i changed this tiny grant uh, for exploration of some materials into a full-blown exhibition that the Herbert Gallery, when I saw this space, we, I'd looked about three or four other spaces, but as soon as I walked into the Herbert Gallery, it's just fantastic, and they were gracious enough to host um, uh, the first bond and then this subsequent presentation. Uh, so that's how it came about. Uh, it was a specific brief to look at the World War II history of Coventry but the roots of the piece went back to 2009 uh, as a piece called Capture. Uh, but there was also um, a video work we showed at, at Dresden in, in the artist QA after the performance. It's called Ramble. And I basically, Ramble was taking seven, uh, six or seven dancers, black dancers, out into a, a National Trust property. And while we're on this ramble, discussing what it was to be British and black or Asian, you know, and uh, that again set a dialogue of patriotism, belonging, not belonging, uh, displacement. And I think, uh, Barbara, you may have experienced that yourself being Italian and then settling in Germany. So, so those. I think those pieces are a part of my wider dialogue and how one piece might drift into another work. Yeah. We, we can have a look to finally to the performance at Centralwerk and maybe afterwards you can show right away our your trilogy uh, at the Herbert Gallery, how it looks like there now.
but then the bombs started to come and it was horrendous. Das kann man gar nicht beschreiben, was dort drin ist. Drei Stück. Wir haben gedacht, das ist schon schlimm. Aber, wo die dann maßlos über rüberkam. Thank you. That was a, um, the performance in Dresden, and yeah. I mean times times are uh, changed. Uh, war is in Europe, and so and when you watch this now, on the one hand you say war it was there all the time, and in our and but we are differently confronted at the moment with images of war. And um, and yeah, and I mean that the, the the attempt to finding images for that experience is what you did, and 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 uh, what art in the history always tries to do. And mm. can you tell a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, from paintings by Goya or or any historical paintings where, you know, before film was available, all these uh, war paintings and describing atrocities were done through through paint. And then, you know, there's a massive uh, change when Picasso did Guernica and uh, it, it got into an abstraction, but there's figuration going on. Um, so you've got these interactions. Picasso's work uh, I've, I've quite admired in the sense that he'd done stuff for stage and performance. Um, um, David Hockney had worked with performance uh, art, art, which his art related to a stage set. And, and in that ilk, some of these are sort of uh, in, in that vein, really, what I'm doing. But I'm actually performing it as part of the performance team as well. Um, so the way art communicates, you know, art is probably the most powerful language on the planet. You know, and some for some reason it gets pushed down to the bottom of the pile because people feel they don't understand art because it got into such an elitist, complicated language. And you know, quite rightly, some people go into a gallery, they see something, say, "Well, that's not art," because they don't understand that art is wider now. You know, it's not a painting, it's not a piece of theatre, but it could be lots of different things now. But the how to communicate through visual art, I think that's probably the centre of why I'm doing different facets that wrap around the same theme. Uh, it's an access for everybody to get into that space 
uh, through different channels. Um, just behind us here, I don't know if I can swivel this around, you will see a new piece. Yep. Is it, oh, we got uh, that's all right if you're in. <laughs> don't worry. This is Heather. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this, this piece at the back is a new work called Wall, W A R L L. And it took about four months to complete, and it's the work of different community members from children through to teenagers and adults and um and it's i've got people with autism uh that have created works um and a lot of them uh talk about ukraine uh, and different conflicts but they're all saying the same things about you know hope um pain uh, you know, all the different aspects of what conflict brings. But I also, in my engagement with 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 people of different ages, I said, well, start with your own family or a conflict that you have at school. You know, is there a bully that you're having to deal with? And what do you do? Do you go to someone in authority? Or do you say, back down? and try and come to an agreement or do you stand your ground and fight um so these um uh, works from from a cross-section of people tackle that in their own language um and if the graphics are naive it doesn't matter because the message comes through and sometimes the naive graphics compositionally are really powerful um <clears throat> so so this piece is really a, a community engagement in a sense, uh, but it's brought into this space because of the dialogue that this space is, uh, you know, in exploring. Um, the, the thing with the wall as well, I about a year ago, I, I tried to talk to agencies where there were ex-soldiers and veterans who may be able to contribute to this piece. And it was really difficult to get uh, uh, the, 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 the spaces where I could get that to happen. But about two weeks before the exhibition, there was an event here. It was a, the Veterans Charity event. And I managed to uh, get into that event by the gracious, gracious invitation of uh, uh, one of the agencies. And um, while I was there, I spoke, I had my little table with with the proposition of the exhibition. And I was asking ex-veterans what they would like to say in this piece of work. And I've got about four or five pieces now of people who had experienced war and also suffered, uh, some of them had suffered PTSD, post-traumatic uh, uh, syndrome, uh, stress synd syndrome. And, um, they, some were reluctant to actually put pen to paper because it brought back memories to them and memories that they can't get rid of. But eventually, uh, I think it's through the communication, you know, they said, okay, I will, I will give you a piece. And they wrote it and they said, put that up. Uh, so it was really, really interesting space. And I did show them snippets of the paintings and work behind uh, uh, the video works and there was immediate gut reaction so that the sounds and the vision brought back to them the battle that they were in and to the point where they said i think you might need uh, to put a, a disclaimer or a waiver to anybody entering the exhibition that may have uh, suffering stress and distress from a, a war previous war situation um, that they may be affected by those sounds and, and uh, visual cues. So, it, it, in fact, it was, you know, quite good in, in one sense as feedback that this, although we have graphics and music and sound, that viscerally, you know, it, it, it's, it's hitting them. It, it's actually registering uh, a memory, which is very real, um, so it, it sort of 
authenticated the piece in one sense uh, and what i'm trying to ex do through through the medium of music and visual art and performance action uh and so all these different elements are speaking uh, so there's an access to the piece in in those different spaces and different levels we yeah. could go now to uh well we are about to go to an end to our uh, our event and um i would like to see the two minutes uh of the performance in dresden uh of the scene that we were talking about yeah oh. yes yes we'll, we'll try and load that um My brother-in-law came home, he was a prisoner of war, and my husband was a prisoner of war. My father had that sort yeah, so I can, I can own photo. People killed and people maimed. I wouldn't like to go through it again. Was ich end mies fand, dass dann die Kasernen, die blieben alle stehen, ne? war alles stehen geblieben. Bloß eben die Innenstadt. But you lived for that. You'd say to each other, see you tomorrow. We hope, and we meant that. We really meant that, and it did happen. Ich bin mit meiner Mutter in die Musikschule gegangen und da brannte die Synagoge. Nur ich als Kind, oh, da kommt die Feuerwehr und da sagt meine Mutter, die hört das Gerüst. Ne? Da kommt keine Feuerwehr. In the in the wall that you were showing with your community work, there was a, a graphic. Um, is this victory one of the? Yes, I, it pretty much relates to this scene, and uh, probably they haven't seen the the the, the video, but they have they have actually. Um, that's okay. done, yeah, that's done by. Uh, uh, one of the participants in uh, do a, a Zoom class called Painting to Music. And I said, there's a collage going on and we're going to listen to some music and let's see what the responses were. And uh, Joe, she actually produced that and it's really compelling. Um, it was from a photograph as well of this soldier, but I think the drawing is so penetrating. It was much more, you know, gutsy than the actual photo that sourced but uh, it's an amazing and you're right it relates to that that last and just to say on that last uh dialogue from uh hannah she's talking about the synagogue burning and uh no one coming to help um as you recall three three days before our uh, uh performance uh, the incident in halle where uh, someone tried to break into a synagogue but couldn't get in and he shot three was it two or three immigrants um and then videoed himself uh shooting them uh and it was horrend horrendous really but it just brought home that the thing that we were portraying in the performance has not gone away because three days before we we just experienced it 
as, as you know, just literally down the road from Dresden. Uh, so again, the this dialogue is continuing. Uh, it was quite quite chilling, really, when when that happened. Uh, if, if you recall, yeah, yeah. As a journalist said, I mean the discrimination or racism or will to be aggressive and to do war is always there it's just mm. no matter how most of the people behave who yeah. how they are able to yeah uh, uh, confront this aggression uh, the spirit of aggression and yeah. um, um just uh on before we wind up um i was going to mention that when I came back from Dresden in 2019. I tried to complete both parts and present them in uh, this gallery as two parts. COVID came and all the exhibitions were postponed. So I'd done six months work related, trying to get this uh, set up and then suddenly it was all washed away. Um, so nothing happened for a year and a half. But during that time, someone had set, approached me and said, there's a an old set, the oldest cemetery in Birmingham called the Warstone Lane Cemetery, are looking for something uh, to celebrate the uh, completion of uh, the works to this heritage part of the, the cemetery. So I thought I'd go down and take a look. And as soon as I got there, I saw this huge cemetery with a semicircular wall. And... Um, and it's got catacombs as well, with uh, as well as graves. It's got these burial catacombs where lots of people are buried in one unit. And um, and they were looking for a light and sound event. And I thought, you know, it felt like I called it bombed full circle. But the journey I'd gone from going to Coventry, Dresden, and then back to Birmingham, and finding out that Birmingham had had a blitz. Uh, in the war, but it wasn't as well researched and uh, publicized. So I thought, here's another space that needs to be explored. So that became the third part of the trilogy. And um, rather than performance, paint performance, one of the dancers who's been on this journey has actually become a really good musician and rapper. And he, and he wrote a, a rap piece called Bomber and also worked with Phil Thompson, a poet who wrote specific poetry is about uh, one one piece was uh, a, around a, a weapon of, of a second world war weapon called a punch dagger and so i created a, a, a different kind of work uh, in terms of uh, no painting but i say no painting performance but and create uh, two animations from paintings uh, and drawings and these were assembled and they were projected on this huge wall. And we did it during COVID times, but uh, we had about 30 audience because of COVID. But it became part three of the trilogy. And um, a, a wonderful woman called Beryl Paramore presented her oral testimony. And it's, it's very poignant and very clear. And so that those three women are ba basically the anchor of, of this trilogy. Um, I think we may have a little snippet of, of that. Well, Sirene, they had a stupid mind. Rosa Halle, alle drei, oh, die sind alle dann umgekommen. Oh, und das war ja nur so laut jedes Mal, wenn man es verschreckt. Das kann man gar nicht beschreiben, was da los war in Deutschland. Wir haben gedacht, das ist schon schlimm. I pit, it lies where I lie, on the frosted mound I claim as mine. Exercise freedom to seize the day, is your level of devotion equal to the gain? The cycle is vicious, we are religious. W A R War Womb to Catacomb Book ended time From slime to fresh air to slime Womb to Catacomb A story do tell 
about times you rose and places you fell. And Frank and my sister Lisa standing against the school wall weeping. With my husband's sister and her sister in law and myself. They should be brother in law, was I? I've been blown up. You know, it's people disbelieve, but sometimes you've got to believe because that's what happens. Yeah, Thank so, so that, was, that was the how it's expanded now into big work. And so those three components are now showing in this exhibition. We've got a screen up there, which is showing the animations um, and uh, drawings. One animation I've created from my drawings. Another one is community drawings that I've got from people. And uh, yeah, and... So, oh, this is uh, the Crystal Knight one, really. I mean, it started off as a, a drawing of da people dancing. And then suddenly this collapsing building started to happen. So I've titled it, you know, uh, Despite Everything We Danced On. Um, I thought it was very appropriate for this exhibition. Um, and this one... Again, two quotes, uh, one from Winston Churchill, meeting joy to joy is better than war. And at the top is, uh, must all this aching go to making dust, Alan Lewis. Um, so again, this was in my painting to music um, sessions. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff which looks visual, but it's, it's come from hearing something. And that's that's triggered it off, um, and I just love how prompts can make you creative. And that's as artists, what we do, uh, we're constantly searching, uh, or sometimes you stop searching, and it, the prompt hits you, and you have to just do it um, in the best way possible. And I, li I like the idea of spontaneity; hence, the drawing or the sketch for me is much more powerful than if I sit down and spend two months on a on a, on a watercolor or oil painting you know that, that punch you get from a drawing it's just so much with so little time and uh the spontaneity is a really important piece of of the the, the process mm. well Sarandit, thank you very much for this conversation it's been yeah. interesting and uh wish you yeah a lot of uh, yeah for the yeah. work and uh, with the community and your own work and i think and the fact that we've done it on armistice day i mean <laughs> it's 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 amazing isn't it uh, yeah. because of covid the exhibition failed and now we've had the opportunity to present it a much richer work um and uh, it's just you know despite covid having stopped a lot of things it actually helped this particular piece and uh and pushed it further, further, and, and to present it on Armistice Day has been brilliant. Yeah, really, really love it. And it's great to see you again and uh, say hello to the rest of the team. Hopefully, I'll yeah. another visit at some point. <laughs> and Interesting. yeah, I will tell the others. Andreas helped me uh, here, Andreas Grossmann, and all the central work. And thank and, you uh, very much to the Herbert Gallery. Yeah, Heather's been great, and, and they're a great team. I mean, you know, in all dimensions, everybody's uh, all together, and, and it's been a real privilege. Yeah, and they're oh. excellent hosts. Um, so until... See you next time. Yeah. <laughs>